Hello everyone, this is a short video to show you about the blood supply of the gastrointestinal system. The abdominal aorta gives celiac trunk at T12 level, the superior mesenteric at L1 level and inferior mesenteric at L3 level. The celiac trunk will be supplying the foregut, the superior mesenteric supplies the midgut, the inferior mesenteric supplies the hindgut. The organs of the foregut are esophagus, stomach, liver, gallbladder, proximal duodenum, spleen, pancreas. As you know, the duodenum is having four parts. The first part of duodenum, half of the second part of duodenum will be supplied by the foregut, exactly at the opening of the common bile duct. The lower half of the second part of duodenum, third part of duodenum, fourth part of duodenum, that is the distal duodenum, part of pancreas, jejunum, ileum, cecum, appendix, ascending colon, right transverse colon, that is still the left, one third of transverse colon, it will be supplied by the midgut. So if anyone asks you, the appendix will be supplied by which gut? It is from the artery of the midgut whereas stomach will be from the artery of the foregut. The duodenum and pancreas will get blood supply from both foregut and from midgut. The organs of the hindgut will be left one third of the transverse colon, the descending colon, zygmoid colon and rectum. So if you know the organs of each gut, we can easily give blood supply from the branches of these guts. Let's see. This is a schematic diagram to show you abdominal aorta giving celiac trunk, superior mesenteric artery and inferior mesenteric at level L3. Okay. Celiac trunk gives branches to three major organs that is the stomach. In the lesser curvature it will give left gastric. The common hepatic that is going to the liver and then you can see splenic artery going to the spleen. Now the common hepatic will give right gastric artery as the names are similar the left and right will anastomose along the lesser curvature of the stomach that means they will have communication along the lesser curvature the next branch is the proper hepatic means it will actually go and supply the liver then you have gastro duodenal the proper hepatic will give left hepatic and right hepatic the right hepatic will further give cystic artery which will supply the gallbladder. The gastro duodenal will give according to its name two arteries one is to the duodenum which is called superior pancreatico duodenal artery supplying the upper half of the duodenum and pancreas whereas the gastro is the right gastro epiploid supplying the greater curvature of the stomach. Next, you can see branches from the splenic artery. It is the left gastroepiploic artery. These two right and left gastroepiploic will anastomose. That is, they have communication along the greater curvature of the stomach. The next branch is the short gastric artery from the splenic, which will supply the fundus of the stomach. And pancreatic branches, which will supply the pancreas. These are all the branches of the celiac trunk. Let's see them. This is the inferior vena cava. To the left of it, you will see abdominal aorta. You can see the first major branch that is the celiac trunk at the T12 level, giving the first branch left gastric along the lesser curvature. Then you can see splenic artery, which is posterior to the stomach. This is also a tortuous artery. Why is it tortuous? Because when the stomach expands, we do not want it to compress the spleen. The splenic artery, this, we do not want it to compress the splenic artery. The, it carries large quantities of blood towards the spleen for immune activity. The third branch from the celiac trunk is common hepatic artery, which gives proper hepatic that is going to the liver and giving the right and the left hepatic and the cystic artery. The common hepatic also gives gastro duodenal artery and the right gastric right gastric with the left gastric will anastomose along the lesser curvature of the stomach. The gastro duodenal will give superior pancreatico duodenal artery and the 
right gastro epiploic artery the splenic artery will give left gastro epiploic artery they both will anastomose with each other with each other along the greater curvature of the stomach so if the greater curvature of stomach is marked and asked the blood supply is asked you should write left and right gastro epiploic artery splenic artery also gives short gastric which will supply the fundus of the stomach it also gives pancreatic branches to the pancreas now we'll see the branches of superior mesenteric and inferior mesenteric superior mesenteric gives jejunal and ileal branches to the jejunum and ileum it gives right colic means it is going to the ascending colon it gives iliocolic which will further give appendicular artery it also gives a uh, middle colic which will be anastomosing and it also gives inferior pancreatic or duodenal which is one of the first branches of the superior mesenteric artery inferior mesenteric gives left colic okay which will be supplying the descending colon the left colic and the middle colic will anastomose with each other uh, inferior also gives uh, inferior mesenteric gives sigmoid artery which is going to supply the sigmoid colon and it gives the superior rectal artery supplying the upper part of the rectum the rectum is supplied by three arteries superior from the inferior mesenteric artery middle rectal which is coming from the internal iliac artery and inferior rectal which is coming from the internal pudental artery okay let us see them so you can see the inferior uh, vena cava okay next you can see the abdominal aorta and you can see this large branch over here that is superior mesenteric and this will be the inferior mesenteric branches okay superior mesenteric artery and this is the inferior mesenteric over here superior mesenteric giving all these small branches which you are seeing that is jejunal and ileal branches then it will give iliocolic which will also give appendicular artery going to the appendix then it will give right colic going to the ascending colon it will give middle colic giving going to the uh, transverse colon to the left one left one third of the transverse colon so these are all branches these are all parts of the mid gut being supplied by the superior mesenteric as we discussed in the table be before and do not forget the inferior pancreatic or duodenal which is the first uh, branch from the superior mesenteric artery okay supplying the distal part of the duodenum and the lower part of the pancreas what are the branches of the inferior mesenteric it will be the left colic okay which will supply the uh, descending colon it will also be the sigmoid artery supplying the sigmoid colon and the superior rectal artery okay superior rectal like we said it will it will anastomose with the uh, like it will uh, be the supplying the upper part of the uh, rectum and then you have the lower the middle and the lower part being supplied by the other arteries okay so uh, i hope you have uh, understood the ventral branches that is the celiac trunk given at t12 level the superior mesenteric given at l1 level inferior mesenteric given at l3 level the lateral branches are one going here to the diaphragm so it is the inferior phrenic then you can see going to the adrenal gland will be the supra renal br branches then you have renal going to the kidney then going to the gonads if it's a testicular testis in male and uh, ovarian in female and then you have lumbar and you have common iliac okay so these are the lateral branches the lateral branches are the paired branches okay thank you all